Good evening and welcome to Clausen World. Today I'm in the garden, as you can see, and today is all about the basil. It is that time of the year for me that I can start harvesting some basil. So it's time to harvest that basil and make some pesto. So join me in the garden and in the kitchen because it's all about the basil. I am so excited about harvesting this basil, you guys. You just don't know. I wait all year. I wait for a few seasons to cut my basil. I mean, I have waited since last season to cut basil, to grow basil. Just absolutely love basil. You guys don't know. So I am cutting this basil down. There's a bug trying to hide from me. There is no hiding from me. You gotta go, bye bye. And I am cutting this basil because I want to go into the kitchen and make some pesto. Now what you see me doing, can you see me? Can you see me guys? Yeah, you guys can see me. What you see me doing, let me move the camera just a little bit. I want, I want to get you guys all the way in there. Let's just, let's just get in there, shall we? Let's, let's get in there. Now what you see me doing is just chopping it down. I want to make it bush. There is still a little bit of time for this basil to actually grow a little more. So I'm going to take this leaf off because that, that leaf is yucky. But I want this basil to bush. So I'm just taking it. I hope you guys can see. And I'm just cutting it down. Just like that. I'm taking it all the way down. Just like that. And it should put some side shoots out and bush up for me. Now there's a couple of leaves in here. They're looking a little worse for the wear. We're going to take those out because we don't want to have any of these yellowing leaves. And I need to feed it this week. It's about that time for its weekly feed. So we will be doing that, not today, but I will be doing that. So I will take this as well. And I'm gonna leave this basil this size, just like that. Now I'm gonna move this out the way and I'm gonna grab this pot over here because I have more than one pot of basil in the garden. Now this one was getting close to going to seed, so I'm gonna take that seed top off. And again, I'm just gonna cut it right down where it has, let me see if you guys can see. It has two leaves here that'll, that'll bush out and make a Y. So I'm cutting it down to that point. And if it doesn't have one, I'm taking it down to the next set of leaves because I want this to grow some more for me before the end of the season. Now this is that beautiful purple basil. I do have one that did go to flower, but that's okay. This basil will not lose its, uh, its flavor because it has gone to flower. At least that's what I read, we'll see. We shall see. It smells amazing though, I can't tell you that. So I'm just gonna look inside to see where I can give it a good chop and I'm gonna cut it right here where it's got some leaves forking out into a Y. And I'm just gonna go through this plant and cut it down like I did the other one. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just chop it down. I wanna take all these top leaves off, leaving it with a junction to where it can bush out and grow me some more basil before the end of the season. So there we have it. Uh, let's see, do I take this one? Yes, we're gonna take you two. He's gotta go. Oh man, I can just taste that pesto. Man, y'all, you're gonna go in the kitchen with me in a little bit. This right here, this is holy basil. This is not going to be cut. Uh, this is gonna be used for tea. So this one is not gonna be cut, but this little puppy right here, I know I've cut him a little bit. I feel like I wanna cut more. I'm in, a, I'm in a, a cut happy mood. I'm gonna take this little one out because he didn't survive, so he gotta go. All right, so this one, I'm gonna take this leaf because this leaf looks a little bit worse for the wear. Gotta go. 
all right I'm gonna leave this plant just like this you can't see it but I actually put some seeds in here I sowed some seeds so I have some white um, I think it's white sage it might even be some more basil I don't know it'll present itself to me and let me know what it is when it gets to be that a big baby but I've got some new babies germinating in the bottom and it looks so beautiful so I'm gonna let that be so I'm gonna go over to the other plants because of course you know this garden has more than one pot of basil in it so let's go over to those pots and pick that basil and this right here is what I've just harvested off of these two plants look at that Ooh, I'm gonna make some real good pesto tonight y'all Let's go over here and get some more basil. Another Shall pot we? that has basil in it. It also has my watermelon in it. So I'm gonna be really careful about not clipping that watermelon and just taking the basil. And it looks like this basil, uh, something might have been pooping on it, maybe a bird, I'm not quite sure. So we're gonna go through and we are going to take that off. We're not gonna eat any of that. But I wanna take this top growth off and I will take a look at those leaves uh, and make sure that that's not burnt poop or anything that we should not be ingesting. And I'm gonna take all those leaves off. I know you guys can't see that, but I'm just cutting them off down here. Let's see. Looks like something might have tried to uh, chomp on this one too. Cutting off a few leaves that don't look their best. But that's okay we're gonna we're gonna make the best of it that's for sure because uh, basil is delicious and we're gonna make the best of it all right so we're gonna put that in the bucket and let's see got a long one here we're gonna cut that one down to right about there making sure there aren't any dark spots no bugs that we're gonna take inside the house might be a spider or two right there so they gotta go Let's see, chop, chop, chop. All right, making sure we're not taking any bugs in the house. Looking up under the leaves, making sure that we're not taking anything inside. All right, so that looks pretty good. That's gonna go in the bucket as well. Now those are um, watermelon. So I'm going to take this side shoot right here i'm just going to chop it back a little bit like so and there's a little something on there i can't quite distinguish what it is so that's got to go bye bye but overall that looks like a relatively good leaf so that's going to go in the house as well and i'm going to leave the rest of this uh leave it alone and uh I need to treat this watermelon because it's looking a little worse for the wear, but that's not today. Today's basil day. All right, let's go over to the other plant. Here's another plant that I have in the garden that has basil in it. I should say another pot. This looks like it's got some leaf miner, so that's got to go bye-bye. Yep, that's got to go bye-bye. Take that out. All right, let's see. Um, this is a tomato plant. So we're gonna just chop off a few of these leaves that don't look like they are happy and healthy. Look like they might have got some leaf miner. So we're gonna get rid of those. We're gonna take this and we're going to chop it down to about there. Gonna inspect the leaves, making sure we're not taking anything inside that's got leaf miner. If it looks like it has leaf miner, it's gotta go. Uh, if it just doesn't give me that overall beautiful feeling, it's got to go. And I'm going to put that in the bucket. Now, this is a small one. And this particular tomato got knocked down a couple of days ago in the rain. So that's why it's leaning. It used to be propped up and I haven't propped it back up yet. So that's why it's leaning. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to chop it down to about there. Taking a look at the underside. Making sure I'm not taking any bugs in the house. Let's see. Cutting off any leaves that I just don't like the way they look. There we go. Looks like it might have leaf miner on it. All right. 
so outside of that they look pretty good I'm gonna take that one off too just in case and that one just in case and that one looks good so that one's gonna go into the bucket now the bucket's getting pretty big I mean that bucket's got a lot of stuff in it so I have another pot over there those are kind of small I'm gonna leave those I'm gonna leave these to bush out and grow for me some more now I have one more pot that has basil in it let's go see actually I have two more pots but we're not going to be harvesting any of that cinnamon basil today because that's going to be a, a feat I, I gotta do something with those big old black and yellow spiders in order for me to get that cinnamon basil so we're not going to worry about that today but I do have some more purple basil so let's go over to that pot and see about harvesting that there is no way I'm going to be able to squeeze in there and show you guys me harvesting that basil to where it's really worth you seeing so I'm going to harvest that purple basil off camera and then we're going to go in the kitchen but i'm going to go around the other side so that you guys can see right what i'm talking in between about. the turmeric you see those little green and purple leaves that is purple basil that was gifted to me by an employee so i'm going to cut that basil down some not all the way i want it to continue to grow and i want it to bush out but i am going to get some of that basil as well it's in the lemon balm pot and as you can see that lemon balm is really tall I do need to harvest more of that lemon balm I have another project that I need to do with that uh, but that will be another video but before I go getting off into this massive mess that can be a bit scary sometimes look at those turmeric leaves you guys I mean they're as tall as a toddler look at that look at that that turmeric is just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and before I go off in there I've got one right here as well just amazing I'm gonna have a really I hope to have a lovely harvest this fall for turmeric all right let's get in there and get that I almost that base. did not show you guys my very first elderberry turn look at that this is my very first year with elderberry I bought these elderberries early this year and look at that that flower head is turning into actual elderberries just amazing I'm amazed I mean I just got this several months ago it was a twig when I got it and now it is elderberry it has been beaten up and battered and bruised by the storms that we've been having it has knocked it down to back to two little bitty stalks and twigs but those few little twigs have are gonna yield me just a few elderberries and I'm happy to have even just this little bit because at one point in its life it is going to be grand and magnificent and I will have so many elderberries I won't know what to do with myself but for right now I'm so grateful just to have this okay this is my entire haul or harvest of the elderberry elderberry good gracious I'm looking at the elderberry and I'm, I'm saying elderberry this is my entire harvest of the basil I've got a stinker bug over there look at that stink bug that stinker bug is deciding she wants to play she came out for a brief moment to go potty and of course to be nosy and now she's running around trying to get my attention but it is time for us to go into the house because yes I'm talking to you no I'm not playing I'm not chasing you it's just not happening uh, no, no ma'am, it's not happening. Mm, no, she wants to, she wants me to run after her, y'all. But anyway, no, I am taking this basil in the house. I was distracted, I was looking at the elderberry. But I'm taking this basil in the house and I am going to make some pesto. I have washed and dried my basil leaves. Now upon closer inspection under the light in the house, I have less basil leaves than I would like, but that's okay. I have basil growing in the garden, so I will have more to harvest soon. Now, what you'll need to make your pesto is not only your basil. You must first wash and dry your basil. You must have olive oil. This is not the brand that's in here. I recycle, so I recycled this olive oil glass jar because I thought the jar was absolutely beautiful and I use it for more than just uh, olive oil. I have a few of them, but this is olive oil. You need olive oil. You need garlic. I've got a couple of cloves here. 
you need Parmesan cheese. I have a wedge of Parmesan cheese. You need pepper. I like to crack my pepper, so I will be cracking my pepper. And you need pine nuts. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, crush my garlic and add my garlic and my olive oil. So let me do that. Hang on just one second. I have my chopping board right next to me. So let me move you guys down so that you can see the chopping okay, board. So don't ask me why, but I always manage to have a paper towel of some kind on my chopping board. So what I do is I place my garlic face down, meaning the curved end down on my chopping board so that the, the curved, well, kind of like the flat end, the curved end is up. I take my knife, I place it on top of the garlic clove and I press just like that. You just wanna break it up and get it out of that paper. And then once you do that, you just peel it. I'm not the fastest at this. And as a matter of fact, I probably need to put on my reading glasses so that I can see up close what I'm doing. But this is how you, this is how I, some people have a garlic press. I have a garlic press as well, but I am not gonna press it because it's going to be minced up in the blender. So there is really no need to press it out. So once I've taken it out of its, its paper husk, I'm gonna cut off the end part where the root would grow out of, just like so, on both, just like so. And since I end up having less garlic, I mean, sorry, less basil than I thought I was gonna have, I'm not gonna put both of these in here. I'm gonna put the other one back inside my bowl, like so, so then I will put these in the blender, just like that. Now, I'm gonna open up this cheese Let's see, it actually comes with its own little end here so that you can open it up. And I love Parmesan cheese. I am not promoting any, any cheese. This is just the cheese that I just so happen to pick up. I'm gonna take this and put it into my area over here where I can put it into the compost bin. I've got a little bucket off to the side. All right. Now I'm gonna cut the rind off the cheese first, first and foremost. I'm gonna cut that off. Can you guys see? Yeah, you guys can see. There we go. Make sure I got all that rind off. There we go. All right. Now you can cut your cheese however you wanna cut your cheese. I'm just gonna take some slices off like this and I do this to taste. But first I need to taste this cheese because I like Parmesan. <laughs> mm, that is so good. All right. This is going to go into the blender. Just like so. I'm going to take some fresh cracked pepper. And let me put you guys over here so you can see what I'm doing in the blender. First and foremost. The cheese has made its way into the blender. I'm going to take this fresh cracked pepper. And I'm just gonna crack a few, turn a few. And this is all to taste. There is a recipe, I don't follow it, but I will put it down below specifically so that you can make this at home for yourself. I'm gonna take a handful of pine nuts, pop those in there like that. And now I'm gonna drizzle in some olive oil. Use whatever kind of olive oil you want. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. That's what I like. All right. I'm gonna put the cap on my blender. I'm gonna plug it up because it's not plugged up. Now you can use a um, food processor. I don't have a food processor. Well, actually I do, it's manual, but it doesn't work for how I, I like my pesto. So you make sure you have your cap on, because if not, it'll fly all over the kitchen. And then you just pulse it. I pulse it. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, turn the power up. 
turn it down a little bit. Now I need a spatula so that I can scrape this off the sides. And let's see here. Let me grab a spatula. Sorry about that, y'all. I thought I was prepared. But you know what? This is what happens in everybody's kitchen. Sometimes you got to step off every now and again to get something. Take your top off. And you just want to scrape down the sides. Look at that. Doesn't that look lovely? Can you guys see that? Doesn't that look lovely? All right. Just scrape down the sides a little bit. Now I'm also going to drizzle a little bit more olive oil. Cat back on. There we are. Cap back on and pulse some more. Turn it down a little bit. Okay. Now see, this is why I need a food processor, y'all. All right. But that's okay. I take my time with it. This is a actual a new blender for me. My old one, there was something funky with it. And instead of me taking it and having it service because it was so old and they said they actually couldn't service without me having to pay for it, I went ahead and bought another one. So I got to figure out what's wrong with my old one because the old one I like a whole lot better than this one. This one is probably just so new for me that I just don't like it. But it's what I have for right now. Use what you got. All right. Let's try this again. Okay, and it's telling me that it has moved itself away from the blade. Now this is gonna be a process, so I'll come back when I'm done I with this. I have blended it down to the desired texture that I want. Now I'm going to bottle it up. Now it's time to bottle up your pesto. Now I will be making more pesto as soon as the basil is done or ready to harvest. That's why I'm putting it in this large container this is a quart size jar most of the time you would put it in a pint size jar but I go through pesto in this house like most people would go through maybe mayonnaise or I don't know some other kind of condiment but pesto is so good instead of using like a red sauce for pasta I hope you guys can hear me. I had to take my microphone uh, off. I was having some technical difficulties with my phone. But I use pesto like I would use any other condiment. I prefer pesto on pizza instead of red sauce. Uh, I love to take some toasted bread, dip it in pesto and olive oil, and eat that with some cheese, uh, some olives if you like olives uh, it's a wonderful condiment if you've never had pesto in any other way other than I don't know maybe at an Italian restaurant I say try it try it take some pesto olive oil put it in a small dish crack some pepper over it get some dipping bread and dip away oh it's so delicious so I'm just trying to get my last little bit of pesto out of here from around the blade I will probably have to take the blade off I do have a tool for that to make sure that I get my machine as clean as possible let's see but yes this is I know I'm, I'm scraping it to the last little drop y'all I'm scraping it out this stuff is so good I've already tasted it off camera and it is the exact flavor that I like everything has come together quite nicely um, like I said you could make this in a food processor but I have a manual food processor and it doesn't process the, the food as small and smaller bits as I would like and I just don't feel the need to buy a food processor I have an immersion blender there's a few different ways I could make this I didn't have enough ingredients when I put it in the blender, but it worked out. 
So this is my homemade basil. I made a bit of a mess. But what you do is if you happen to have um, a full a jar that's full versus just this little bit that I have here, how you top this off to make sure that it does not go bad or grow mold or anything is you take your olive oil and you cover the top of your basil. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can move you guys in. I've never done that before, but let's see if I can try. Hang on. Let's get in there. I want you guys to get in there with me. So what you do is you take your, your, your made basil, your homemade basil, and you drizzle olive oil until it covers the top of that basil, just like so. And then you store it in the refrigerator. And that's all you do. That way you don't have any growths growing. There's no mold. I could put a little bit more olive oil in there. There's a little spot right there. Just like that. And then you take your spatula. If you have a small enough spatula, mine is a little bit too big. But I'm going to give it a try anyway. I'm going to clean it up. And I'm going to get that remnants that's on the side. And just push it down up under the olive oil. But if you have a full container of, be of pesto, did I say basil? Yeah, if you have a full container of pesto, then you're not really worried about it. But you just keep that pesto up under that olive oil just like that. And it'll stay perfect until you're ready to eat it in the refrigerator. So that is my homemade pesto. I hope you guys enjoy the journey. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today, and I'll see you again in the garden.